गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स लेट स्टडी पैराथायरॉयड हार्मोन्स दिस आंसर इज फॉर टेन मार्क्स बट इन दी एंड आई विल टेल यू वॉट टू एक्सक्लूड फ्रॉम द टेन मार्क्स आंसर विच कैन बी रिटर्न फॉर द फाइव मार्क्स आंसर सो पी टी एच पी टी एच इज अंडर द फॉलोइंग हेडिंग्स फिजियोलॉजिकल एनाटमी केमिस्ट्री सिंथेसिस सिक्रीशन मेटाबॉलिज्म मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन फंक्शन और एक्शन रेगुलेशन ऑफ सिक्रीशन एंड इन दी एंड अप्लाइड फिजियोलॉजी लेट स्टार्ट विद द फिजियोलॉजिकल एनाटमी यू हैव फोर पैराथायरॉयड ग्लैंड The macroscopic appearance is of dark brown fat. It has two types of cells: principal or chief cells and auxentic cells. The principal cells are the main cells. The auxentic cells are small to moderate in number. The principal cells are responsible for PTA secretions, whereas the auxentic cells are modified or depleted chief cells that no longer secrete hormone. The principal cells have bigger Golgi apparatus. They have numerous vesicles and endoplasmic reticulum. Whereas the auxentic cells are absent in young humans. They contain auxophil granules. Now let's study the structure. It is a single chain polypeptide with 84 amino acids. Molecular weight is 9500. Synthesis. The precursor molecule is called pre pro pth pre pro pth it has 115 amino acids it is degraded to form pro pth it has 90 amino acids it is further degraded to form the main hormone pth which has 84 amino acids and it is packed into secretory granules for further use now let us see the secretion pth is released from chief cells by exocytosis the stimulus is decreased i repeat decreased plasma ionized calcium concentration the receptors are calcium receptors in parathyroid cells now let's see the metabolism plasma levels are 130 pg per ml half life is 5 to 8 minutes degradation is in peripheral tissues and in liver now let's see the mechanism of action three types of receptors are seen you have pth 1r you have pth 2r and you have type 3 that is CPTH, PTH one R, it binds to the PTH and PTH related proteins PTH small R capital P, PTH two R, it binds to PTH but not to PTH R P. It is found in brain, pancreas and placenta. Type three CPTH, it reacts only with carboxy terminal of PTH, but not with amino terminal. Now let's see. what further you have in mechanism of secretion g proteins for pth pth 1r and 2r are coupled with two types of g proteins that means there are two types of g proteins to which pth 1r and 2r attach they are gs and gq binding of pth with these proteins or receptors activates two things first adenylate cyclase cyclic amp system and second phospholipase c system let's see what happens in the first system when the first system is activated there is increase in camp which further activates protein kinase a which causes phosphorylation of intracellular proteins which further increases transport of calcium and other ions now let's see the second system here There are two things which increase. First is increased IP3, and second is increased DAG. Increased IP3 causes increased intracellular calcium mobilization. Increased DAG causes activation of protein kinase C. Now let us see the functions. The functions are under four headings: calcium and phosphate levels in ECF, effects on bone, effects on kidney, and effects on intestine. Let's see what happens in the first heading. As soon as the PTH is infused, that means it's come iv through the uh, fluids ca 2 plus levels begin to rise and it reaches a plateau in about 4 hours in contrast phosphate concentration falls more rapidly than the calcium rises and reaches depressed levels in 1 or 2 hours now let's see the second heading mobilization mobilization causes two things rapid phase and slow phase The rapid phase is called osteolysis, and the slow phase is called activation of osteoclasts. 
PTH causes removal of bone salts from two areas in bone. First area is bone matrix and the second area is in vicinity of osteoblast along the bone surface. In between the osteocytic membrane and the bone, you have an area here called the bone fluid. Now the osteocytic membrane pumps calcium from bone fluid into ECF. So the bone fluid has one third concentration than the ECF. Now the osteocytic membrane also has a pump. Now the pump bears in two ways. First when it is overexcited and the second when it is inhibited. So when it is overexcited, it increases, sorry, it decreases the calcium in the bone fluid. I repeat, when the pump, this pump is overexcited, it decreases the calcium in bone fluid. This causes calcium phosphate salts to be released from bone. This causes calcium phosphate salts to be released from bone and this release is called osteolysis. Osteo means bone and lysis means breaking. In contrast, when it is inhibited, the bone fluid calcium increases exactly opposite to before. Calcium phosphates are redeposited in the matrix. Now let's see what happens further in the rapid phase. So osteoblast and osteocytes are two types of cells in the bone. They both have PTH receptors. PTH activates the calcium pump. When the calcium pump is activated, it causes rapid removal of calcium phosphate salts from amorphous bone crystals. Now PTH, what it does to the pump? It increases the activity of the pump. How it increases the activity of the pump? By increasing calcium permeability. Calcium permeability on the bone fluid side of the osteocytic membrane is increased. This causes calcium ions to diffuse into the membrane cells. Then calcium pump on the other side of the cell membrane transfers the ion to the ECF. Slow phase. The osteoclasts do not have PTH receptors. I repeat, they do not have PTH receptors. But activated osteoblasts and osteocytes, activated osteoblasts and osteocytes send secondary signals to the osteoclast. So the first two types of cells, they will send signals to the osteoclast because the osteoclasts do not have PTH receptors on their own. The major signal is R-A-N-K-L. It activates receptors on pre-osteoclast cells and transforms them into mature osteoclasts. Now what happens when the activation of the osteoclast system occurs? Two things occur. There is an immediate activation of osteoclasts that are already formed. And second, there is formation of new osteoclasts. Bone contains 1000 times more calcium than ECF. Now effects on kidney. There is increased reabsorption of calcium which occurs in specific areas of the nephron that is the late distal tubules, collecting tubules, early collecting ducts and ascending LOH. There was increase in calcium but there is a decrease in phosphate ions. There is also a decrease in sodium, potassium, amino acid ions. There is an increase, I repeat increase in magnesium and H plus ions. What are the effects on GIT? There is increased calcium and phosphate absorption by formation of 1,25 dihydroxycholecalciferol from vitamin D. Now let's see the regulation. Decreased calcium levels cause an increase in PTA secretion. I repeat, decreased calcium levels cause increase in PTA secretion. So the gland hypertrophies in these conditions, rickets, pregnancy, lactation, whereas the gland reduces its activity in conditions where there is excess calcium in diet, there is increased vitamin D in diet, when there is bone reabsorption caused by factors other than PTH, example, disuse of bones. There is a specialized receptor called calcium sensing receptor. Now this receptor when stimulated activates 
phospholipase C, which increases intracellular fluid inositol 1,4,5 triphosphate and diacylglycerol. Decreased BTH is the end result, which is caused because of calcium release from ICF. Applied physiology is for self-based learning. Now, in the end, I will tell you what to write for five marks. For five marks, you are only supposed to write the synthesis, the functions, and the applied. You can write regulation of secretion in short. Thank you so much for watching.